Tissue Paper Masks, Part 2. Welcome to Family Fun Night. Hello, my name is Ms. Chrissy. I'm from the Harris County Public Library System and Lone Star College Side Fair. Welcome to Family Fun Night. On the last episode, we built the base for our mask using uh, plastic and aluminum foil and some tape. This time, we're going to learn how to put the mask together. Are you ready? Let's go. Now that we have our mold set, we are going to need some water, some Mod Podge or glue, either one you want to use. I've tried with both, they both work fine. You're also going to need a spray bottle of some sort. I used an old hairspray bottle that I um, cleaned out really well. There's no exact measurement for this part. I have always sort of done it by sight or feel. I fill up the bottle about one half way full. I don't want it too full because we are going to need to shake it. So about halfway full. Um, less if I know that my project is going to be small. Next, I am going to put about half as much glue in. You can use glue, you can use Mod Podge, you can use a combination of both. I started out with glue and then later I added a little bit of Mod Podge. After you get it all together, you are going to shake it, shake it, shake it. I highly recommend that you cover your working area with some plastic or wax paper or something so that you don't get the glue mess all over the place. I did not do this. Next step is going to be tearing up tissue paper. I generally like to start with just plain white tissue paper um, because I don't like the idea of paper with dyes where it might touch my face later should I decide to wear the mask. Just rip up the paper. It doesn't have to be even. It doesn't have to be neat. In fact, it lays better when it's not even and straight. Um, completely straight lines, if you were cutting them with scissors, you see those more under the different layers. So rip up that paper, have fun with it. The reason I chose foil to go on top of the plastic is that um, I will be spraying a water glue mixture over it. And I found that it's easier to pull this off once it's dry um, on aluminum foil. Now we are going to be laying layer after layer of um, tissue paper on. So put one on, then squirt it till it is soaking wet. Um, this bottom layer doesn't have to be pretty at all. A lot of times the bottom layer actually gets ripped off when you take the mold out. So just layer upon layer. Um, put it on, soak it down with your water glue mixture, and keep going until the bottom is completely covered. After this, you are going to continue to layer on more tissue paper. After it's completely covered, you're going to go on again with another round of tissue paper water glue solution. You're only going to do about three or four layers before you need to let it dry. Let it dry completely. I usually walk away for and come back another day, or I can use a hair dryer. Either way, but you have to let it completely dry, otherwise it gets soggy and can turn moldy. And now it's time to start coloring our mask with tissue paper, um, and only tissue paper. So since I want a pink muzzle on my unicorn, I am using pink tissue paper to color that section. Because I want my pink to be a little lighter than what I have, um, and I want to give it a slightly translucent effect, I am going to go over the pink with more white tissue paper. This is the final form of what we've been doing with the unicorn mask. So now we're going to carefully and gently take it out from the foil. So slowly and carefully, wait till it is completely dry. Slowly and carefully, pull it out. So here's the form that we made. And the inside just has a little bit that we're going to carefully pry out. Now, my original masks were made a little thicker. 
This mask is lighter than this mask, but because I did not use nearly as many layers for this one, it's a whole lot thinner and a whole lot lighter. The positive thing about making a heavier mask is that it will last longer and it'll be more sturdy. This one is very flimsy, but very light. And I have the finished product. What you can do with this is you'll take scissors and trim it up. I will be putting in eyes right here and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can either use scissors to puncture through or um, make sure that a grown-up is using an exacto knife. Usually, and with the other ones, I made sure that the eye holes were in there first. For this one, I waited until it was a little more done. Partially because when I started the project, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a dragon or a unicorn. But since I already have my dragon mask, I decided on a unicorn. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. Now if later I decide that the paper is too thin, I can continue to add more layers to it. That's one. And I'm going to use this as my template for cutting out the other side. Of course we're not done because it doesn't quite resemble a unicorn yet. Earlier, I cut my ears, and I wasn't sure if I wanted it to be a unicorn or a dragon. If it's going to be a unicorn, I'll want the ears at the top. If it were to be a dragon, I would want my ears off to the side. Of course, it is your creature, so you can do it either way you want to. But for my unicorn, I'm having the ears go up. Decide where you want the ears placed. You can tilt them off to the side, you can have them facing forward. Either way you want to do that, it's up to you. Um, make sure that you decided on the placement before you start applying the glue. Um, you can use a glue stick, but if you're going to do that, you're going to have to make sure that you keep um, it in place for a good long while before you let go. Uh, if you have a grown-up with you who has a hot glue gun, they can glue them on. You can also tape them on if you'd like to and just go over with another layer or two of tissue paper to make the mask a little thicker and to hide the lines. To make the horn, you're going to roll up a piece of paper. You're going to twist it so that one end is pointy and the other end is a little wide. Next, we unroll it and cover it in glue. Uh, this way it's gonna make the horn be stiffer and not unravel on itself. Pre-rolling the paper just makes it a whole lot easier to roll it back up into the horn. Once I'm happy with how it's shaped, I'm going to cut it to the length that I want it. Then I'm going to cut around it, just straight cuts up. This is going to help it set on the mask a little easier. Then we're going to glue that down. We're almost done. It's just time to add a few more details to our mask. What we're going to do next is add the mane. For this, you're going to take chunks of tissue paper and um, get a pencil or a pen, and you're going to set it in the middle of the tissue paper. You're going to need to have a glue off to the side and put a dot of glue on the end of the tissue paper. Once you have the tissue paper with the glue on it, you're going to set it on top of the unicorn's head. You can make the mane short, you can make it long, you can use yarn instead of tissue paper if you'd like. You can use rainbow colored tissue paper. This is one area where you can get super creative. Um, you can also paint the horn gold if you'd like to. But it's all up to you on how you finish your unicorn mask masterpiece. And here you have your unicorn mask. Good job! Thanks for joining me at Family Fun Night. I look forward to seeing the masks that you made. See you next time! If you'd like to see more programs by our Kids Corner staff at SciFair, please check out our LibGuides. And hit the thumbs up button to like and please share. See you next time. Bye.